understand Graham's law, we have to first understand diffusion and effusion. So let's go back and, and look at those two things first. Diffusion is where particles of a gas spread out. Now this could be in a chamber, a closed chamber, or it could be in the wide open space out of doors. But diffusion is where particles move through a, another gas to get to a point that we call equilibrium, where they're spread out and evenly spaced throughout whatever uh, space they have to spread out in. And in effusion, we have a different situation, only in the sense that the particles, as they spread out, are going to hit the walls of a chamber, and there's going to be a hole in that chamber somewhere. So as the particles spread, when they hit the opening, they will be able to exit the chamber, and we call that effusion, where the particles of the gas must pass through a small opening. Normally going to be a small opening, but it could be a large opening. Either way, it has to go through an opening. Now, Graham's law works well with both effusion and diffusion. Now, I want to show you an example of each by going to some special videos, that are not videos, but uh, gas simulators. And I'm going to my web helps page on my website, Mr. Wigger's chemistry class website, mrwiggerside.com forward slash chem. And anybody can go here. You go to Learning Center, and then go to Web Helps, and then you go down and click Chapter 13, and that will take you to this page. So what I'm going to do first of all is let's release some perfume in a closed chamber that has some gas in it, and let's see what happens. Now this, remember, is a gas simulator. So the first thing we want to do is the setup, and then we're going to tell it that we want it to trace one of the gas particles of the perfume. And then we're going to go ahead and turn the movement on and release the perfume. And now you can see that stuff spreading out. And by the way, you can stop this at any time and then continue. So you can kind of see what's going on. And notice some of the particles are already in the box at the top but very few of the particles are moving in a straight line. Most of them are moving the way our little traced object moves. Definitely not in a straight line. Now let me clear out the traces and let's look again as this guy's moving through space. Alright, we'll show the we're going to show tracing now again and that tracing is going to happen just like it did before and let's see, there we go. For some reason, the tracing isn't working as well on the re redo. Anyway, we can clear those traces, get them out of the way, and now as you watch the molecules, you notice some of them are moving faster than others, and at this point in time, we're pretty much even throughout the entire space available. This is called diffusion, and it goes until we get to equilibrium, or things are spread out as much as they can spread, and they're relatively even throughout the the this chamber. Now let's go back and let's watch a video, or not a video, but a, again it's a gas simulator to see effusion. And you'll see in this one we can compare hydrogen and oxygen, which will be important for us to understand when we get to Graham's Law. So first of all we're going to start and we're going to start with hydrogen. And what's going to happen is this little line here is going to go away and the particles will be able to move freely between the chambers. Here we go. Notice it's all moving up, but now we're getting passage through that opening. And if you watch carefully, you'll see particles going both ways through that opening. There, one just went through. And you can watch, oh, two more went through to the left, and one or two came back, one more to the left, and two back to the right. And that's the way it goes as time progresses. So I want you to notice the particular speed of these molecules now. Okay, we closed it off, and now let's watch what happens with oxygen. By the way, you do see the number of molecules on this side at this position, and you'll see the number of molecules on this side at this position. 
So what we're going to do is open up the oxygen. Here we go. And start it over. Oh, notice that tremendous slowdown. Why? O2, the mass, the molar mass of O2 is going to be 32 grams. The molar mass of two hydrogens for H2 is only 2 grams. So these guys are 16 times bigger and they're moving a whole lot slower, but they are still going through our opening, which is an indication of effusion. And in this case, the effusion goes both ways because this, the chamber on the left is the same size as the chamber on the right, and we're also seeing that if the chamber were on the left without any walls, those molecules would probably go bye-bye, and all of the molecules would leave the box. So this is our difference between effusion and diffusion. Now let's go back and let's look at what we had to start with. We have diffusion and effusion, and we also have Graham's law. Well, what is Graham's law? Let's look at it. We have, first of all, the rate of diffusion. of A over the rate of diffusion of B. But on the other side of this equality, we're going to have stuff in a square root sign, and that stuff is going to be the molar mass of B. Oh, why is that? because Graham's law says that A and B are inversely proportional to, the, the rates of them anyway, are inversely proportional to their molar mass. And so on the bottom, we're going to have the molar, get molar mass of who? You guessed it. It's going to be the hydrogen. And that would be the A. It doesn't matter who you call A or B. B could be oxygen, A could be hydrogen, or you could turn it around. Because if our B up here is hydrogen, then the B down here has to be hydrogen. Where if A were hydrogen, A up here would have to be hydrogen. Now that's as far as I'm going in this video. I'll make a follow-up video and show you how to work some problems using the Graham's Law.